Hey, it's Dan from Bocane Designs. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to update pages that are built with Elementor. So when you log into WordPress, go ahead and click on Pages and go ahead and select the page you're going to want to edit. In our case, we're going to edit the home page and we'll go ahead and click Edit with Elementor. This is going to open up your Elementor page builder and the Elementor page builder gives you a live preview on the right and a toolbar on the left. If you need more space with the toolbar, you can actually go ahead and make it wider or narrower. And this really is just to make it comfortable uh, for you. It doesn't impact how the website's gonna look when you hit publish. Uh, so if you're on a laptop, you might need to make this bigger. If you're on a widescreen, you might benefit from it being a little narrower, um, depending on what you're doing. So just keep that in mind. You can also hide it entirely by clicking that little button. Now we can look at our homepage or we can bring back the editor. Uh, so let's get right into it. We're gonna head in, let's say we need to change this background image. Anytime there's a background image, it's, or a background color, so white, or this image, or white, or this image, or this gr grayish white. Uh, these are section elements, section styling. So we can right click, um, let's do the first image. So this blue tab at the top marks that this is a section. Uh, sections are like rows. They typically run left to right and then they have columns. So here's a column, here's a column, here's a column. They have columns with inside. So this is a three column row or three column section. Uh, so we've selected our section. The left sidebar becomes a section editor now. And we can go to the style tab and pick an image or a color for the background. So if we don't want a picture anymore, click the little trash icon. And now we have a background color kind of, um, you know, just generic, but we can set the background color here by clicking this little color swatch. And then we can change it to whatever we're looking for. Uh, you know, maybe a, a dark green. Um, so that's how you would change color. But if we do want to use a picture, you can go ahead and click choose image. And this will let you pick images from your media library, or you can click upload files and select a file from your computer. We're just going to go ahead and grab a picture from here. Uh, here's a nice picture. We'll go ahead and click insert media and here's our background. There are some settings you can adjust about your background. So position, attachment, repeat and size. If it's a photo, you always want to use no, re no repeat for the background. But if it's like a, a pattern, repeat might make sense because then it'll just kind of lead into itself the way a pattern might be uh, able to do so. But photos do not work like that. Um, so leave that on no. Uh, attachment, in a lot of cases, we'll leave it on default. And then position, sometimes it matters based on the image. Um, so you might play around with it. You can just go through the different settings and you can see the image seems to be going up and down. Um, if it was a skinnier image, it would also be going left and right, but this image is big enough to fill the entire width. So it's really just, it's taller than the space we're using. That's why when I tell it the center on the top, it looks like this, but I go center on the center, or center on the bottom, you can see we're looking at the bottom of the image. Whereas when you do top, this is the top of the image. Uh, if you're not really sure what to do, a lot of times we just recommend center, center. If it's just an aesthetics background image, that'll do good enough. Um, so the next thing is we wanna change our text. We can go ahead and click on explore the colorful world. We can say, check out Zion National Park. That's where the image is from. A wonderful gift, a wonderful place. And then we go to the button and say, visit now. See, that's how you change a button. You click on the button. The left sidebar becomes a button editor. You can change the text on the button and then you can also link it somewhere. So you can copy paste your own web address here if you know what you want. But maybe we wanna link it to another page on our site. Let's just say this is actually a contact us button and we wanna link it to the contact page. So we type in contact and Elementor searches your database and looks for anything that might match your type in uh, your query. So I typed in contact, very easy for it to figure out I want the contact page. And when I click on that, it auto completes the web address for me. If this was a third party website and you wanted it to open a new tab, uh, so maybe there's a social media link or something, you would click this little gear next to it and click open in new tab. But in our case, we don't want that. Um, you could also change the button alignment with these. Uh, the general size of it here. Uh, in this case, this, this 
Beam has pre-made styles that are holding it in place, but this would just make the button fatter, bigger, and such. Uh, you can also go to the Style tab and adjust very specific things here. Maybe we don't want that color as a background. Maybe we want it to be greener, dark green. But on Hover, maybe we want it to be a light green. So now it's dark green, Hover, light green. So that's how you would use something like that. Um, it's changing regular photos. So here's a section, here's the headline. We've already covered how to change that. Basically click on that and then you can edit the header here. You can adjust what kind of H tag it is. If you're not sure what to do with this, don't touch it at all because whoever built your website, maybe they set it up correctly. Uh, and if not, it probably doesn't matter for your situation if you're not working with an SEO or some kind of marketer that understands how to use them. Um, so go on to the next area. Let's say we want to change these images. Click on the image you want to change, and now we have the image editor. We'll go ahead and click, click Choose Image. And now let's just find a different picture. Here's a bunny. And then we also want to change this one. Here's a bunny. So now we have our two bunnies. Um, and we're going to go ahead and change this one to Gatsby, because that's his name. And we're going to change this one to Byron, and that's his name. Um, so what you can see here is this looks like an image, because it is. And then this is actually an image box, um, which lets you have a name and text linked together and you can link it all to one page. Um, so that's why it's a little bit of a different interface, but editing is the same thing. I found what I didn't want and I replaced it with text that I did want. Here is another example of another kind of text input. This is a text area. This is probably going to be very familiar for most people. Um, so this lets you type in paragraphs of text. You could think of it almost like Microsoft Word or Google Docs Word, um, where you just type stuff in. You can highlight something. You can make it italic. Maybe we want that one to be bold. Uh, you can hit enter. You can highlight some text and make it into a, a header. And you can see it's updating live over here on the right. Um, so you could do any kind of formatting you need in here. There's other uh, tools as well. You can set the text colors, uh, you could do a block quote, things like that. Um, and then you can also tell it to auto columnize. Uh, you could do a drop cap by default. You can change the font colors. Um, so in general, there's a lot to be explored, but really it's, it's a very straightforward interface for editing text. Um, so here's our next section, and we've already covered a lot of things like how to change things or how to update things, but what if we want to flat out delete it? Um, let's say we don't need this block of text here. We can right click on it and just go to delete. Um, in fact, maybe we don't even want this entire column. We can just go to the column, right click the column and go to delete, and the images will automatically, auto, well, the columns that the images were in completed the space, like they just filled in any remaining space. So now we have bigger images, nicer images. Uh, but maybe maybe we want the tall images up front or up top and the, the, the wide images below. So you can literally just drag and drop widgets in Elementor. And that's what makes this really nice. Or maybe we want this column over there and we want that guy over there. Instead of doing and moving all the widgets manually, we can actually drag and drop the column and it'll move everything in that column over. So that's how you use the basics um, for editing text, photos, rearranging, deleting. Um, we can even change the order of our section. So maybe we want this quote at the bottom. We can click on this tab, the section tab, and then just drag this whole thing. Let's put it here. So now it shows up between this image and this section. When you're done editing in Elementor, it's very important to click the green button down here that says update, because that's how your changes actually get saved. So a few more things with Elementor while we're here. Um, if This is how it looks like on a desktop. We can actually look at it on a tablet or phone by clicking the responsive computer icon down here and click tablet or mobile. And you can see it gives you a general idea of what your page will look like. And the cool part about this is you can set specifics on mobile. So you can see right now on mobile, this section has 120 padding up top and 60 padding below. But if we go to tablet, you can see it's got 120 up top and 100 below. And if we go to desktop, it's 270, 240. So you can be very specific and have things look big on desktop, but also small and not cluttered on mobile. Um, and that's kind of what makes this a very special tool. Uh, you don't need to be a developer or know how to code to do things like that. 
Uh, let's go to the next thing on the toolbar down here, which is the history tool. So the history tool has two types of history. There's actions and there's revisions. Actions keep a log of everything you've done since you started editing in this moment. So we can see everything we've done since I started recording the video, basically. And you can roll back to any of these changes real easy by clicking this and then clicking this little icon right there. There's also the revisions page, which doesn't have much in it because this is a demo site. But let's say you have a brand new website, you get it from your developer, you make some changes to it. Six months down the road, you realize you deleted something you should not have deleted. Hopefully, it's going to be stored in here still, but you can come to your page, go to revisions, and then find the old revision, click on it, and then it'll give you the option to restore it. Uh, in this case, it's not working out well because it's a demo site. There wasn't anything earlier. It was a blank page before I started recording, so I really couldn't restore. But in your situation, you'd be able to restore to how the site was when it got launched, probably. Uh, so when you're done editing your page and we've clicked update and there's no more reason to update, we want to go to the next page to edit. Maybe we want to go to the contact page next. We can click the Hamburg in the top left corner and go to the finder, type in contact, and then it'll give you a list of pages that it thinks might be correct. It's basically scan, scanning the page name, but also the page for the word contact and giving you relevant results. So the home page has the word contact on it. That's why it's showing up in here. Same with this page. This is a pop-up form that's literally called contact, so it's showing up. But we know we want the contact right here. So if you click on that, it'll go ahead and load the contact page directly in the editor, ready for you to start editing the same way. Click here, click here, click here, and you can just update whatever. Um, makes it very easy to jump around the site and make a lot of updates all at once. If you're ready to go back to the admin area of WordPress, we're done editing in Elementor, we're done. It's time to leave. So we click the Hamburg icon and we can either click on view page, which will bring us to the front end of the website, the public facing end, or click edit or exit to dashboard. And exit the dashboard is gonna bring you back to the general WordPress area. If you see a screen like this, you can click the W here, and that brings us back to the page list real fast. And then you could continue doing whatever it is you're doing. Okay, that covers how to edit your website using WordPress, uh, using Elementor in WordPress.